All right, guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel and thanks for dropping by. Uh, in this short little video, I'm basically just uh, addressing a question that was uh, posed uh, in the comment section of one of my videos uh, about text along curves. It seemed like an easy enough request to accommodate, so I'm going to try in this uh, short little video. Please uh, forgive my voice. It's absolutely wrecked. Um, I must have caught a bug over, over the weekend, something like that. Uh, we went to go see John Wick 4, which was a lot of fun. And uh, I, there were a lot of people out. The weather's really crazy lately. It's uh, super hot in the day. and uh, Well, not super hot, but it's getting warmer. And at night, it's getting really cool, but it's also wet and kind of rainy. So uh, it's like perfect, you know, environment for some kind of bugs. Like I, it might be strep, it might be something else. Anyway, went to the doc, got some in antibiotics. It's clearing up. But uh, yeah, with some hot tea by my side, I think I can get through a quick tutorial. If you if you guys don't mind listening to this uh, subdued voice. Um, so let's just jump right into this. The question that I that was posed to me was this. Um, how do I get, uh, basically, uh, this is for you, Christopher, out there uh, from the comments. Um, the question was basically, how do we get text to run along an arch like this, right? But uh, there was kind of a two-part question. First, you know, it was like, there's a, it's a really popular effect these days, I'm assuming, on t-shirts. I'm kind of uh, behind on the t-shirt game these days. I'm, I'm, I'm focused on other stuff, but um, apparently this shape is very popular these days. Uh, a lot of designs are featuring this kind of situation. So, some There's one set of text that runs along the arch like this in the, in the example design. And then there's another that, that runs along the bottom like this, and it sort of creates like a, um, like a bordered like a 3D, like a closed horseshoe effect. <clears throat> uh, the first part of the question was, how do we make this arch, right? And the second part of the question is, how about, you know, how do, how do we get the text to run along it? And uh, so, yeah, um, we're, we're going to address both of those things. Um, this template that you see here is free. You can download it from my Gumroad page. There'll be a link down in the description. Um, it's been there for years now. Uh, a lot of people have downloaded it. Uh, it's free. You guys, uh, if you're if you're into making t-shirts and you want to have like a template that you can rely on, uh, it's set to Redbubble standards. So all you got to do is put your design in the square, and uh, you know play around with your t-shirt colors a little bit, and um, yeah, you can uh, make some cool designs and maybe make a buck or two. If you're uh, feeling frisky, uh, throw me a couple bucks when you download it, and uh, if not. No big deal. It's all good. It's all good. I hope you guys uh, have the best of luck on Redbubble and uh, or you know Society Six or T Public or wh whatever your bag is. So um, for now, let's jump in and try to tackle that problem. I'm going to go back to Designer Persona. The first thing we need to tackle is that archway, which is not terribly difficult. Um, I'm I could go with a rounded rectangle here which would give me something that looks a little like this, right? Um, and, and it already has the, you know, the corners rounded for us, right? But, uh, you know, I want a straight bottom on the, on the shape. So actually what I want to do is I want to grab the rectangle tool and just draw out a rectangle. I would say something about like 2,000 by 3,000 is perfect. I center it to my design. And then I'm going to reselect the shape tool. And then up here, I've got convert to curves. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my uh, show touches. I haven't been doing very many tutorials lately, but I'm sure it helps. So one more time, let's back up. Let's go back to the shape tool right up here. Convert to curves. And now what I have rather than a rectangle is uh, this curve object. And I can grab these corners here and then go to my corner tool. And the default setting is none. I can change it to rounded corner. Then I can just complete this, bring it down till it makes a perfect circle there and hit. You see how it kind of expands 
I want those two circles to sort of line up like that. And actually, when the dots reach the center point like this, they'll snap. And then here, if you want, what you could do is you could just duplicate this shape. Long press, duplicate, just so you have a backup in case something goes wrong. You know, you mess up, you can start again. So I'll come here, and I will convert this to curves. All right. So now we got a pretty decent archway. And again, um, we don't really need this thing to be filled, so I'm going to turn the fill off. We can still see the, the path that's being uh, put out there, but just in case, I'm going to turn it black so we can just can kind of keep our eyes on it while we're doing this activity. All right, so here's what we need to do. We'll grab our artistic text tool, right? And we'll just select this curve object and then it's it's kind of it's interesting uh, wherever you tap there will a cursor will be placed but if you tap on the inside like sort of like let's just I'll show you I'll show you you can see with the show touches it's very easy to see it you can tap here and it places the cursor on the outside right but let me back up if I go in Oops, one more time. It's, it's see, this is this is kind of what I was getting at. It's a little bit touchy. You got to get it right in there. There you go. And now it's on the inside. And um, I'm assuming that uh, you you know um, Chris, the requester, uh, you, you know you watch the old video, so you you know about the uh, the green and the red triangles. And but if you're new to the channel and you're just catching this video for the first time, basically. The green triangle demarcates the sort of beginning of the text wrap, right? And the red rectangle, or the red triangle, uh, is sort of the end of it, sort of the limits of the text. Uh, I, I'm i going to take, make this text really big, right? Like something like 72. And um, what should I write? I'm not sure. Um... <laughs> uh, we need something for a t-shirt um, I'm going to try to pick something random out of my day today um, uh, let's just say uh, oops I need my text back one second there we go sorry guys Click that one more time. There it is. Let's, um, let's, uh, let's, you know, let's find a decent font really quick, first of all, rather than Arial. Not that, not to say anything bad about Arial. There's nothing wrong with Arial. Um, <laughs> in the, oh man, okay, ITC Serif gothic uh, if you don't know this font it was iconic from the 80s um it was on the he-man box art and i love this font it's just incredible but let's um yeah let's do some he-man action i drew some fake or today uh, i caught a i have this really cool little widget that shows me like random stuff from my um pinterest boards and today he-man and fake or showed up so i draw a really i drew a really cool picture of fake or today or faker. Anyway, he's he's basically the blue evil He Man. It's pretty cool. Let's uh let's let's go with little He Man catchphrase. I have the power because we, essentially I do. And let's make it all caps. Double tap. Oops, sorry. Okay, I. Have the power. Okay, so I've got that done. So now I'm going to go take my red triangle and bring it down to the end. And I'm going to 
move my green triangle over just a little bit. And I'm just going to keep adjusting these two until it's pretty decent. And now what I want to do is there's no text wrap on the inside, so I don't really need to move these, but I will. There it is. That's because it went over, so I, I'm actually going to pull it down a little bit. And what I want to do is I'm going to triple tap to select all. You want to see that one more time? Triple tap. Watch this. One. That's a word. Triple tap. One, two, three. Gives me the whole line. Okay. So then I'm just going to go in here and we'll, we'll, let's try 144. Whoa. Perfect. It's nice and big. It's exactly what I wanted. All right. So we've got, we've got a few little issues here, but I'm sure that this is probably why Chris reached out to me. This is not easy to sort of deal with. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, an issue, right? Well, this is a situation where tracking and kerning is going to really save our butts. Um, and another thing that I want to do is uh, I'm going to take this object, right? And you can see here it's if, if it didn't have the text on it, it would say it was a curved text object. But I'm actually going to shrink it down just a little bit. I'm going to drag down to about right there. There we go. And now I'm going to get in here with my cursor and do a little, um, do a little uh, kerning and tracking. If, to do that, I go to my text studio, right? And then I'll go over here to my characters and then I'll go to positioning. And then here I can track and kern override. So at this moment, I think I'm just going to stick to some, we'll do a little tracking. I'll kern this O to this P a little bit. Now there are probably more elegant ways to handle this and more sophisticated ways to handle this. So uh, please don't take this um, as, uh, you know, this is not, I, I'm just kind of solving, you know, it's a, it's like, it's like a duct tape solution um, to the, to the problem. Font stuff is really complicated. It's a lot of fun to play with. I have built a font before. And I, I, I remember there was a, cre a request for me to do a series about that. Um, but it's just I haven't had a, a time to sit down and really plan that out the way I would like. Um, but it, it is possible to create your own font in Affinity Designer, but y you've got to export it to another app, specifically Glyphs Mini, um, which I have. And I... Because, you know, for a while I was really interested and I, and I had ideas about, you know, maybe I'll make a font. Because fonts are just awesome. But anyhow, that's um, neither here nor there. Now what I'm doing is I'm doing my final little bits of kerning and tracking. I think... I think we're all set. Let me, let me, let me kern that just a little bit more. The way that I was imagining it. Okay, and now the last part of this little mystery is down here on this curve. You know, how can we get you know the text on the bottom? Well, here's where you know just basically use it, using some you know basic problem solving skills gives us a few options. Um, so I hope that this part helped with, you know, figuring out how to get your text to track smoothly along the curve, the archway specifically, and also how to create the arch. A couple of different ways you could approach this. But what I want to do is, what I want to show you is this, it's that sometimes, um, the fancy solution isn't always the best. We could duplicate this archway, right? And for example, um, I could take the text and wrap it around down here and get it inside there and then go in, oops, maybe, um, maybe I want to write something on the bottom like, um, Grayskull or Eternia or something like that. Let's go Grayskull. Let's, let, let's put for Grayskull or how about we just put 
Eternia. Okay. Since we're using the He-Man inspired font business. Okay, so we got to find our situation. It's not easy, right? It this is where it gets it gets a little too hairy for my liking. So we could come in here and do it like this. Right? And then I'll have to get rid of my exclamation mark here to make it fit. Right? But we don't we don't necessarily get that sort of effect that we were looking for. But it's I mean it positions the text like we might want it. So I think the the general the best solution for this is to simply oops create a new line of text ah sorry so it's like every time i if if you know because that's there <laughs> because it's there every time i even click anywhere near it it's going to keep trying to select that as the text i'm just going to go down here and write eternia or type eternia okay and really, like, this is the simple solution. We just, it, we can, you know, something like this. I think that's probably the best solution. And then what you've got to do is you've, you've got to figure out what trade-offs you want to make. Maybe you, you shrink the text down a little bit. Maybe you uh, change the weight of it to sort of get it to fit. You know, there are many different ways you can sort of handle this situation um, uh, tactfully. Um, maybe shrink the... Now, I'm not using a keyboard, and it, this is one of the behaviors that I, I'm i not a real big fan of, the, the, the keyboard dynamics, but um, how everything kind of jumps up while you're working on text. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of that. I wish everything was a little more stable, but... I think they did the best they could, right? Because it's like, mm, uh, you know, you've got to be able to type and you've got to be able to see what you're typing. So it's uh, it's kind of tricky. But yeah, you can, you can track the word a little bit, track it a little bit, stretch it out, transform it. Like, you know, there are lots of different ways to get it to fit. Um, let's see. Yeah. But I would say, suggest approaching it this way like that and um you can turn off uh if you if you're not you know if you don't want to see the red squigglies you can turn off the um auto correct in your apple preferences uh in your um accessibility preferences you can turn off auto you know like you can turn off the spelling and stuff like that like uh, the correct spelling uh and show er spelling errors and things you can turn it off um so that you don't have to look at that ugly line all the time. It's kind of annoying, right? But yeah, there it is. So, um, yeah, um, Chris, I hope this helped. Um, it's a little 20 minute video, uh, a little bit longer than I thought I was going to run, but, um, yeah, maybe, uh, this will, this will help you out. Uh, guys, uh, keep working hard. Take care of yourselves um, and stay positive. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers.